the News Channel 5 Network, this is Morning Line with Nick Barris. Good morning, everyone. Nick Barris here. Thank you for joining us on Morning Line, live and direct to you this morning. It's on a Tuesday. And uh, yeah, um, again, we're a skeleton staff here at the News Channel 5 network as we continue to self distance. And most of the folks here at News Channel 5 working from home are in the field. But Mary Elena's back there on the phones. I, I walk in in the morning sometimes, and it's just me and an editor in the empty newsroom. It's crazy when I'm doing the breaking news hits. Of course, Adam's anchoring upstairs. But this morning, Someone threw on a table there a bunch of candies. And so I've been eating nothing but mini Heath bars and peppermint patties. So I'm wired for this show along with a cup of coffee. And I want to remind folks that this morning we are not only coming to you on the plus, but we are also streaming live on Facebook at newschannel5.com and newschannel5 plus. So you can message us with questions. And I think many of you may have some. It's going to be an important show today. We're trying to cover every aspect we can with regard to the current pandemic. And one of those, of course, legal issues, uh, especially some of the legal issues that apply to many of us, either dealing with elderly loved ones or elderly loved ones yourself. If you're sitting at home, one Wondering about nursing home facilities, assisted living facilities. We saw what happened at the facility there in Gallatin. Concerns about that. If you have questions about, you know, who and what can get the stimulus plan, a lot of seniors messaging me. I'm on SSI or I'm on Social Security. What do I have to do to make sure I get my stimulus check? Um, you know, a lot of other questions in terms of how you go about getting a notary if you need now. And there's there's exceptions that have been made to that to allow you to get notary done where you don't necessarily have to appear personally to keep social distancing. All of this and much more can be answered by our guest. He's one of the best elder law attorneys in the entire country. The guy lectures everywhere and he's right here in town. We're lucky to have him. And he's a friend of mine. Tim Takis joins us. Good morning to you, Tim. Can you hear me? I can, Nick. Uh, great to be here, I, so, so to speak. It's a comfort seeing you this Sitting morning. Sitting right here in my office. Yeah. Right, right. Are you at home? Are you at home? Sitting right here in my office in, uh, in Hendersonville, Tennessee. I see you have a bow tie on. You have a bow tie on. I do. Absolutely. That's the Tim Takis I know and love. It's good to have you on, sir. And mm -hmm. let's start real quick. I will remind folks again, uh, elder law attorney dealing with a lot of the issues with relation to those who are seniors and the like. What, if you can, give me a little bit of an overview of what you feel you've been dealing with that is unique to the situation you are in now and the questions and, and concerns you're getting from many of your clients. Well, for one, we're getting more people that are interested in doing a state plan, and we've actually put in some put in some procedures in our office that allow our clients or our prospective clients to be calling us and basically doing all of this over the phone, all of this by email, uh, so we can get it done very quickly. So that's one thing that we've seen that we've had we we realized that we've had to adapt uh, and. Um, you know, change our process a little bit. Now we still are, um, you know, we're st still doing our estate planning what we call like the right way. So we're not like rushing through things, but we realize that people in this really uncertain time, uh, they need to make sure that they, you know, as we always say, is to make sure they get their ducks in a row. So that's one of the things that, um, you know, one of the changes that we've made. Of course, our staff, you know, our, our team as well, we're all we're all working from home and we're so fortunately you know we're very fortunate to be able to do that uh, i'm 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 at home now i'm able to uh, you know i have a i have a i have a typically i have a full calendar but i'm doing all of my uh, my meetings um, either by zoom like here at the station does or you know even by telephone um, you know so i'm able to talk to people i'm able to talk to my, my team you know, we're able to reach our clients and our families who have the questions that, you know, as you said on the top of the hour about, you know, things that they're worried about. Sure, sure. You know, and there's some, obviously some different worries here. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this, Tim. There's a lot of areas we can go on this. We're already getting uh, questions for you on uh, Facebook as well as calling in. But the, the sad and tragic part of this, we know so many seniors, especially since they're most vulnerable, have passed away. I, I was hearing on the news this morning that there was yes. a family in New York City where a loved one had passed away and it took them 30 days before they could find a funeral home to take the uh, the loved one in to do the burial. And yeah. I'm just curious if you're dealing, gosh forbid, with a death in this situation, 
Mm -hmm. With everything shut down the way it is in estate planning, I mean, what are you telling clients if, if a loved one does pass, whether it's from the coronavirus or something else, with the way things are shut down right now? How, how do you go about dealing with that? Well, we haven't yet heard about a funeral homes being, say, either overtaxed or not being able to provide services. You know, and certainly that's a good thing for now. And uh, I think every, I think all of us are kind of, we're all monitoring this situation, and we feel that uh, we haven't hit the peak yet in Tennessee. That might, that may come, or at least certainly in this area, the peak may not come until next week. Uh, but so far, uh, mostly what we've seen is that funeral services are being uh, postponed. Now, you know, obviously, I'm, I'm, I don't know the, all the details of that industry, but you know what I'm suspecting is is that the funeral service, you know, the funeral homes are getting people, um, you know, the deceased uh, in. Um, I don't want. I'm, I'm trying to avoid sounding crass here, yeah. but. You know, maybe in a bag or something like that. So, you know, maybe they're able to. I don't, I don't know if they're able to do their ordinary, uh, you know, embalming process. But we've we've actually seen, of course, you know, essentially the drive-through funerals at this point, which is really what we're seeing. But we have not actually seen a suspension of that service itself. Yeah, as I said, I think the extreme situation is in New York City, where they had the worst. Um, right. I got a couple questions mm -hmm. here, just, and, and I'm not sure how much you are sure. wired into some of this, depending on as a, an elder care attorney, but with regard to the stimulus, and I know many seniors, mm -hmm. you know, who are on Social Security are looking for that. You know, some seniors get their benefit when they're collecting disability or Social Security through like an express card or an account that way where it's mm -hmm. automatically deposited. Is it your understanding, as it is mine, that the uh, stimulus, as they qualify, would probably go into those same accounts that they're getting their other benefits from. Yeah, that's what that's kind of what we're hearing out here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they can get the you checks. Know, my understanding is the same as yours. Okay, just wanted to make sure. A lot of people, you know, very questioning about that and how that plays out. And I understand because the money is going to mean a lot to a lot of these people. Let's take a quick phone call before we go to our first break for uh, Tim Takis. And uh, good morning, Melinda. Melinda, are you there? Good morning. How are you guys? Good, ma'am. So, I, you may I, you may have, or the attorney in both of you may have just answered my question, but I was wondering, when, well, really, when the people who receive Social Security beneficiaries, disability survivors, when will their checks, their their uh, payment actually hit their account? Mm-hmm. Okay, and well, we'll try to answer that for you, Tim. You're probably as much in the dark on that as I am. We know that checks started going yeah. out um, basically Friday, and some people in Tennessee have already received mm -hmm. checks. Um, what are you hearing, yeah. and what do you think most of the seniors in this situation are going to be spending the money on? Are you asking Melinda? or <laughs> I'm asking you. I, I'm not sure what Melinda would, I mean, but about I'm just what curious. they're going to spend their money on? Yeah. Maybe. I mean, I'm thinking is if they get the 1200 or however much they're getting is uh, maybe food and shelter. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it can come down to right now. I mean, because we're, uh, you know, we're looking at, I mean, a lot of our seniors, um, you know, they don't, you know, they depend upon their Social Security check, you know, and whatever little savings they have, you know, maybe they own a house, they have a little bit of savings, and, um you know they're worried about their portfolios you know presumably if they have money in the bank or they have a little bit of money in the stock market or who knows where it is you know it may not be much you know but they're you know they're going to be concerned as well so i would expect that's where it's going to go i agree with you, you know, food and shelter utility I agree. I would say this to you, Melinda. You know, we, I did some reporting on this yesterday. The people who have direct deposit will get the money first, okay? They won't start sending yes. out the paper check stimulus until May 1st is when that'll go out. And they're going to try to do it. Some people say, is it alphabetical or what? My understanding is when they get through this and get the system up and all the money going out, they'll try to get it to those who have the greatest need first, okay? And then others, you know, yeah. who qualify, they get a lesser amount, will get that. But I would think you'll see your check, uh, Melinda, probably some time in the next uh, two to three weeks at the latest yeah you know Nick it's hard to imagine just what a challenge technical challenge that is right I mean we're talking about you know millions and millions of you know checks or transactions or whatever that I mean uh, what what a month six weeks ago mm -hmm. you know this this didn't exist right 
Yeah. So I mean, that's you know, now why we're ramping up to get to, to to distribute all of this money. So. So again, just to be clear, some people are messaging. Well, you know, that's what we're hearing. Is it true? Now, the, the the bottom line on this is, if you're getting a direct deposit of some type of social benefit, that is where your stimulus check will go. Okay. If you're not getting that, mm -hmm. then they'll mail it to you. That's the way it plays out. One way or the yeah. other. The bottom line is, you mm -hmm. just need to make sure that the government knows how to find you. Make sure that they have your address one way or the other. If you haven't filed, if you're not collecting a benefit, you need to file. Make sure they they have a place to send your check. Listen, Tim, we got to take a quick break. When we come back, we've got several okay. calls from you for you, and we've got a lot of folks messaging me. I'm going to scroll through there and see what kind of detailed questions I have from them, from you on Facebook. So stay with us. When we come back, elder care attorney Tim Takis joining us for the first time from a remote location. But you know it's him because he's got his fancy bow tie. We'll take a break and be back with Tim right after this.